Hello, my name is Peter Higgins and I'm an IBD specialist at the University of Michigan. Welcome to the IBD School 200 series. In this video, IBD School 207, we'll be talking about the effect of smoking and nicotine on IBD. Smoking and nicotine have surprisingly contradictory effects in inflammatory bowel disease. In general, smoking causes arteries to constrict and have less blood flow with increased inflammation, which is why smoking is often associated with heart attacks and strokes. This diminished blood flow also means less blood flow to your intestine, and if you're on medication for IBD, less of that medication going to your intestine. This sounds like a bad thing, and generally speaking, for patients with Crohn's disease, it is. People with Crohn's disease who smoke often have more active Crohn's disease and deeper ulcerations. In addition, they will likely need more surgeries, more hospitalizations, and more steroid use when compared to patients with Crohn's disease who do not smoke. The size of the negative effect smoking has on patients with Crohn's disease is roughly equivalent to the size of the positive effect a patient would have from taking Remicade, meaning that for certain patients, quitting smoking can provide them about as much benefit as taking Remicade for Crohn's disease. This may not be enough to put someone into remission, but it can help improve their symptoms. There are also many studies which suggest that anti-TNF medications, including Remicade, do not perform as well in smokers as in non-smokers. Therefore, we strongly advise patients with Crohn's disease to stop smoking and to seek help to stop smoking. This help can include things like nicotine gum, nicotine patches, counseling and hypnosis, and taking medications like Chantix. Whatever is necessary to help you quit smoking. However, just to make things more confusing, smoking has the opposite effect in ulcerative colitis. Patients who have previously smoked and then stopped smoking are more likely to get ulcerative colitis. We don't know if this is because of the smoking or the immunosuppressive effects of nicotine. But bizarrely enough, something about having been a smoker in the past and then stopping smoking actually increases your risk of developing ulcerative colitis. And some patients who were previously smokers get some benefit from starting to smoke again at low doses to help control their ulcerative colitis. This does not seem to apply to patients who have never smoked. Patients with ulcerative colitis who have never smoked do not seem to get any benefit from smoking. Nicotine alternatives such as patches or gum or even nicotine enemas do not yield as much benefit as smoking. It is unknown why this is the case but there does appear to be an effect of nicotine on the nerves to the gut that influences the activity of the gut's immune system. We do not entirely understand this, and it may be more than just nicotine. There may be other components of smoking that contribute to this effect. In the big picture, we still do recommend that patients with ulcerative colitis take care of their heart and lungs and stop smoking for this reason. But there is a chance that smoking at low doses may be helping with ulcerative colitis disease activity in patients who used to smoke. All in all, we'd much rather treat patients with safer, proven medications instead of smoking, which can clearly cause cancer, strokes, heart attacks, and many more health problems. All of this does suggest that there is something interesting about the input of the nerves to the gut and how the nerves affect the immune system, because the nicotine is clearly signaling through the nerves to the intestine. There are currently studies going on in Europe looking at nerve stimulators of the vagus nerve to see if they can help control inflammation in ulcerative colitis with a non-medication nerve-focused therapy. What's going on with smoking and ulcerative colitis is puzzling, but also an interesting clue to some of what's going on in inflammatory bowel disease. I'm Peter Higgins, and thank you for watching IBD School 207. <music>